Welcome to Learning Solidity. Solidity is a contract oriented programming language designed for the Ethereum network. These tutorials are aimed at people with two understandings, the first being the Ethereum blockchain and the second being a very basic grasp of programming. Now I won't be covering the Ethereum blockchain in these videos, nor will I be covering the basics of programming, just the basics of Solidity. Now, it probably would help to have a very basic understanding of JavaScript and C because I feel that Solidity is based roughly around those two programming languages. These tutorials also don't really require any additional software. So you don't require any extra IDE or plugin or compiler because what I will be using for these tutorials is something known as Remix. Remix is a browser-based IDE developed by the Ethereum developers. To access Remix, you simply go to remix.ethereum.org and you will be presented with this window. Now, this window essentially gives us access to a source editor, a file manager, and also a mini compiler and I'd say a little bit of a debugger. I won't be going too much into depth with that in this video. What I will be doing is just covering the basics of creating a simple contract with some very basic getters and setters and variables. Now, when you first land on this page, you will be presented with a little voting ballot contract. I feel that this could be overwhelming to new developers. So what I've done for now is I've deleted that and then simply clicked on the little plus here to create a new file, called it myfirstcontract.sol and given a completely blank slate. Now, the first thing you need to do with a Solidity contract is define these um, that you're actually going to be developing Solidity and which version you're going to be using. So you do this with pragma and then specify Solidity and then the version. Now with this, um, I'm going to be specifying version 0.4.0. Um, at this time, when I'm making this video, 0.4.17 is currently out, which is fine if you want to use that. I don't think there's too many differences, but for the purpose of this, I'm going to stick with 0.4.0. Okay, so to get going, all we need to do is define our contract with contract, and then my first contract and then open and close curly parenthesis. Now that is actually your first contract and you can then go and create that contract if you want on the little development uh, blockchain network you have over here on the right. But what I'm gonna do first is define some variables. Now, when you actually compile a, an Ethereum contract, it actually gets, the instance of that contract gets stored on the Ethereum blockchain. So unlike a normal programming language where the instance is stored in memory, all the values are actually stored in the blockchain. So you don't have to, for instance, uh, have that stored anywhere specific to access and update variables. You can do this from anywhere in the world, essentially, or anyone who access, has access to the blockchain. Now you can obviously set some access modifiers for certain people to only access certain things, but I will go into that in a later tutorial. But for now, all we'll do is create our very basic variables. Now I'm only gonna create two, and that is going to be a string and an integer. Strings are very similar to Java and JavaScript, where we can simply say string, and then for instance, in this case, it's gonna be name. Now, if you want to make this um, variable private, with a lot of programming languages, you, you would actually set the access modifier first, so private, string, and then name. In Solidity, you do it um, type, access modifier, then variable name. So it's string private name, which then makes that value private. I'm also then going to create an integer. Now this integer is just simply gonna be age. Now with Solidity, it has the concept of signed and unsigned variables. The easiest way to describe this for people who don't really understand those two is a signed variable can be positive and negative, and an unsigned variable can only be positive. So what I'm gonna use for this, because it's an age, I'm only going to sign it a U, um, a unsigned integer which basically means obviously it can only be a positive value because you wouldn't have anyone with a negative age. Now you can actually sta ex also state the length of the integer, but I'm trying to keep things quite basic. So what I'm gonna do is just say uint and then private and then age. Now obviously I could say uint eight or uint two five six, but obviously that's just the length of it is in bytes. 
So I'm going to, because I'm trying to keep things simple, that's all I'm going to do for now. Now I would create this, but it's not really adding any functionality because these variables are now private. So what we're going to do is a getter and setter for the name. Now, because of the concept of this in Solidity can be a bit confusing to some people, what I'm going to do is create the function as you would similarly in JavaScript, set name. Now the import I'm going to say is string because this is statically typed, so we have to define our variable types. I believe you can use var, but if you use the keyword var, it refers to an unsigned integer of 256 bytes, if I'm correct, or sorry, 256 bits. So we're going to say string. Now I'm going to say new name and not return anything. And then simply set the name as name equals new name. So this will set the value of name to whatever we pass into set name. Now to return the value of name, what we simply then have to do is function get name, not pass any parameters in because we're not actually expecting anything, returns, and then simply state string because we want to return a string. Now in this case, all we have to do is return name. Now we now have our two methods, set name and get name. Now, if you want to actually just test this straight off the bat, what we can do is go over to the right hand side in our little uh, compiler tool, click create. Now, this has now created our contract on the network. If I call get name, it's returning nothing at the moment. So let's get rid of that. Now, if I want to set the name, because the value you actually pass in actually has to be JSON encoded, it requires quotations. So for instance, with name, all I'm going to do is call it um, James, because that's my name. Set name, so no errors, which is always good. Now, if I call get name, it should say James. So we finally have a little bit of an output of James. Okay, so now we have that in place. All we have to do now is a getter and a setter for our age. So similar to before, function set age uint, if I can do it right, uint age, oh, sorry, should be a new age to stop a conflict of variable names. And then simply age equals new age. And also similar to before function, get age returns uint. And that can return age. So now if I create this again, I should have four methods. Now, if I get age, it'll return zero because it defaults to a value of zero. If I then set the age, I'm going to say, oh, well, I'm 31. So I'm going to set the age. Now, if I get the age again, I'm 31. So that in a nutshell is a very, very basic Solidity contract. It doesn't really go into the depths of any sort of ballot or auction system or tokens. It just covers the very basic understanding of how Solidity works. So most programmers should now be able to just do the very basic things. This is going to be the end of the first tutorial. I will expand on this in future tutorials, but I just wanted to get the ball rolling with something quite simple and easy to absorb. I've been James and this has been Learning Solidity. I hope you found this very informative and useful. If so, leave us a thumbs up and a subscribe if possible. And I'll catch you next time.